Okay, this is a continuation of routines that involve Bessie sequences and the Gilbreth principle. Now, at the end of routine two, I explained that routines three, four, and five will be quite a bit different. In particular, those routines are based on an entirely different but recently discovered property of Bessie sequences. So what is that property? Well, given a two cycle or mirrored or AMP packet, here are three simple examples of each of those involving a total of eight values with repeating ones, twos, threes, and fours. Given any one of these, we can mentally impose a Bessie sequence structure on them that will not only identify two post Gilbreth like portions of the packet, but it will consequently permit the application of any number of Bessies in any order and in any quantity and still maintain the above identification of two post-Gilbreth-like portions of the packet. Okay, well that's a mouthful, so let's go ahead and just get started here and show you what we're talking about. So I have here a packet of eight cards, as you can see, and I have a pretty good mixture of suits and values and even face cards versus number cards. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to allow you to choose any of the Bessie sequence shuffles that I happen to have listed here. There's many more that we could use, but this is a good enough list. Um, we'll perform any of these in any quantity or order. Now, of course, you're not here, so I'll have to use this 20-sided die to randomly choose some of these. So let's go ahead and get started. 17. What is 17? Oh, push off pairs, so P-O-P. -P. So what this is, is you just push off uh, two cards at a time into um, one of four piles, just like that. And now the spectator is free to stack these piles from left to right, or from right to left, or we can do a leap frog stacking. Which of those four would you like? Just stack left to right, no leap frog? Okay, that's just fine. So I'm stacking from left to right, that's decided by you. Okay, let's go ahead and just choose another one. Um, I believe that is six. Okay, so that's just a traditional LR or left right shuffle. Would you like left pile on top of the right or the right on top of the left? Right on left. Okay, very good. If I can pick up the cards. Okay, let's do a few more here. Uh, 15. Oh, a 50% down under. Now we haven't actually done one of those in this little series. So a 50, well, down under is where the top card goes down and then the next one goes under. Down, under, down, under. It's also called the Australian shuffle for obvious reasons. A 50% down under is where you do it for half the cards. Uh, so this is where you go. So half the cards, of course, is four since we have eight total. So down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, and then you just drop these on top. So that is a 50% down under shuffle. And I guess I should also point out, we could have had the spectator dictate how those were stacked. Okay, so I, I just put the remaining cards on top. But you could have stacked them in opposite order. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one. Uh, one, oh, a 50% coding. Well, this is where you just count out half the cards. One, two, three, four, and drop the rest on top. Uh, 12. Oh, a feral. Feral shuffle. Okay. So this is where you uh, break the cards, you divide the cards in half. So that would be four and four. And then you just perfectly interlace them. And that's not actually too hard to do. That's called a feral shuffle. Okay. So why don't we do... My paper's moving everywhere. Why don't we do uh, maybe two more? 
Uh, a two. Oh, a super coat. Well, this is where you, you deal out half. One, two, three, four. But the difference here is you give the spectator the freedom to stack left on right or right on left. So maybe they'll want left on right. Okay, and let's do another one here. I'm hoping to get kind of an interesting one. No, we got the Pharaoh again. We've already done that one. Uh, let's see, six, we've done that one. Five. Oh, okay, that's a nice one. So this is a judicious alternate Klondike. Okay, so how this works is the Klondike shuffle is where you take the top and bottom cards off as one. And what we're going to do is go ahead and deal those out into four piles. And the stacking can be as was the case for, for the push-off pairs. You can stack from left to right, right to left, or leapfrog. You want right to left with leapfrog? Okay, so how this works is this little packet leaps over its neighbor and lands here. This one leaps over its neighbor and lands there. And then random stack here. You want left on right? Okay, very good. Okay, why don't we do just one more. Um, 17, oh, that's a push off pairs. <laughs> 10, mange. Okay, that's a nice shuffle. Um, the mange sh shuffle comes in two varieties, over, under, and under, over. Uh, do you have a preference? You want under, over? Okay, so this is where you push the top card into your other hand, and then this next card goes under, and then the next card goes over. Under, over, under, over, under. Okay, well that's enough mixing, but rest assured that you could have the spectator choose any of these in any quantity in any order. And now what we're going to do to kind of finish, um, we could go ahead and do this uh, fun triangle deal. Do you remember that from previous videos? You just deal into a triangle and then you stack in opposite order. So that really mixes the cards. And at this point, uh, let's go ahead and just, we'll just separate the packet into the four bottom cards and the four top cards, okay? Well, if you think about it, after all of that mixing, um, it would be very difficult for any of us to be able to say anything about these two packets of cards, anything helpful. Okay, or certainly anything definite. Well, I think we can, because despite all of this, we have finished with a post Gilbreth like outcome. What does that mean? Well, in the case of the starting packet, as I'll explain in a minute, what that means is each of these piles will consist of exactly one club, one heart, one spade and one diamond. Boy, what are the chances of that? Let's just check it out. Check that out. Heart, club, spade, diamond. Is the same thing true here? Club, heart, diamond, spade. It is indeed. How in the world did we, working together, do that? Okay, so let's quickly just kind of explain this. Um, and technically, what's really interesting about this is we never performed, quote, a Gilbreth shuffle. That's the cool thing. <laughs> and so Bessie's sequences can achieve the same outcome, in this particular case, the same outcome as a Gilbreth performance. And as far as I know, that is unheard of in mathematical card magic. Okay, so what uh, what did we do here? Well, I do want to point out the structure of the start. Now, I, I won't necessarily have it exactly in the same order that it was, but essentially I had the suits repeating. Okay, so we have a heart, and then maybe a spade there, and then maybe a club, and then we need a diamond, and then we need to repeat that pattern. Uh, heart, spade, sorry, <laughs> spade, club and a diamond. Okay, so this is technically a two cycle structure relative to suits. Okay, so we essentially have this kind of arrangement. Okay, a pattern that repeats twice. Okay, so that's the kind of thing I began with. Now, for those who are familiar with the Hidden Structures channel, uh, once it's cyclic, we know that we can do a lot of mixing with it, and we can convert it to mirrored structures, AMP structures, 
as mentioned over here, right, these different structures. Uh, we're, right now we're right here, but we could convert it to that, do a bunch of mixing, convert it to that, do a bunch of different kind of mixing, and eventually bring it back to a two cycle if we wanted. Uh, that's not what we actually did here. I moved right into using these many Bessie shuffles to mix it. But since this is cyclic, at the very least what you can do is a Charlier shuffle for sure. Okay, so Charlier shuffles is where you do top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom. Okay, so this technically is equivalent to just cutting the cards at some location. Well, what does that mean? It just means that the pattern is still there, but you might have a, a different starting value. So here it's heart, spade, club, diamond, heart, spade, club, diamond. So we haven't harmed the fundamental structure of a two-cycle arrangement of the cards. Okay, now, um, where the Bessie sequence structure comes in, I, I talked about mentally imposing a Bessie sequence structure on these cards, mentally imposing that. Okay, so maybe we'll go like way down here if we can. I'm going to try to line these up a little bit here with these values. Okay, so look at the quintessential two-cycle structure here. Now, uh, a Bessie sequence of order 8 is a sequence of this arrangement. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Or its inversion, which is where, where zeros and ones switch places. Okay, uh, but we don't really need to focus on the inversion here. We can just focus on this arrangement of a Bessie sequence of order eight. But look at what happens. Okay, if you, if you recall, this sequence is invariant or is inverted, which is fine as well. It's either preserved or inverted by each and every one of these shuffles here. So these shuffles will preserve this structure like 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, even though like the ones among themselves might get rearranged, the zeros among themselves might get rearranged, or you can have a whole cell inversion of the sequence, but it still maintains the relative groups of these ones and zeros in our identification with the starting cyclic packet. Okay, so in particular, if we had, so let me go ahead and just write this if that's okay. Now, if I remember correctly without looking, but it, it doesn't actually matter, I think we have right here um, a heart, club, spade, diamond. Uh, you'll know if I'm right or wrong on that, <laughs> but it actually doesn't matter um, as long as it's a repeating pattern. Okay, so heart, club, spade, diamond, heart, club, spade, diamond. Well, look at what happens with the identification that we've made of these zeros and ones with these particular cards. Well, where's the first one? It's being associated with the heart, the second one with a diamond, the third one is a club, and the fourth one is a spade, okay? So the ones actually complete a full set of the four suits, and the zeros do the same. The first zero is a club, then associated with a spade, a heart over here, and then a diamond over here, okay? So what that means then is you can put this packet through all of this Bessie shuffle mixing, and it will preserve those two groups of perfect sets of the four suits, okay? And, and then all we have to do now is just separate the zeros and ones from each other. That's all we need to do, okay? And we can see, oh, I had it wrong. I'm sorry about that, but that's okay. <laughs> so, our spade, club, diamond, okay, that's fine. Um, but as long as you cycle through the suits, Okay. Um, well, you probably know if you've watched the first two videos or other videos on the channel, there's a number of ways of separating the ones and zeros. Okay. Now, the most straightforward way is to just, if you have the sequence in mind, you can picture this. And in some ways, it's not too hard to memorize. If you can remember a thousand one and then append to that, quote, the inversion of that, 
Now, that just means zeros become ones and ones become zeros. So you have a thousand one, and now where we had a one, we have a zero, a couple of zeros, we have a couple of ones, a one here is a zero, okay? So if you happen to be able to remember this little sequence, you can actually deal out the cards in, and separate the ones from the zeros. So you just go, maybe we'll have the ones over here, zeros here, so one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, okay? So we have pulled those two apart, and so this is guaranteed to actually give us a complete set of suits, okay? It will always, always happen, okay? And that was without needing to do a Gilbreth shuffle. And as is the case in a Gilbreth performance, the ordering of these cards will not necessarily be known ahead of time. In fact, the ordering will almost certainly be different. But what will be the same is there will be one of each suit in each pile of four. That is what the Gilbreth principle guarantees in the case of this two-cycle structure. Well, we can achieve the same thing with the Bessie sequence and immediately begin mixing it in ways that we could never mix the original two-cycle without utterly destroying it, actually. <laughs> okay, so that is um, kind of what we're doing here. So, so observe the values located. Okay, I think we've kind of talked about that. Because Bessie shuffles preserve or invert, the Bessie sequence, this, we can perform as many Bessie shuffles as we like and still be able to separate the original two cycle into two post Gilbreth light piles of four cards each, with each pile consisting of a one, a two, a three, and a four in some order. Or in our case, it would be each of the four suits. Okay, so that is the first routine that's making use of Bessie sequences in a way that we never had before. And you might be able to guess what we're going to do next, right? Uh, because what we've done is we started with a two-cycle structure, mentally imposed a Bessie sequence organization on that packet, mixed it as much as the spectator calls for, and then we were able to do what we did, have these two perfect complete sets of the four suits, okay? Well, in routine four, we're going to begin with a mirrored structure, okay? And then in routine five, we'll begin with an AMP structure. And it ends up that if you kind of mentally impose a Bessie sequence structure on each one of these, as they are written here, you'll be able to finish with a post Gilbreth shuffled packet, okay? So the Gilbreth principle is one of the most famous and remarkable principles in all of card magic. And what I'm saying here is if you begin with any of these structures, which we've been studying extensively on the Hidden Structures channel, then you can immediately impose a Bessie sequence structure on it and mix it in ways that you never could if you begin with the traditional cyclic arrangement of a packet of cards. So join me for Routine 4, in which we'll look at mirrored packets. So thank you for watching.